Welcome to Enigma of Success. We talk about business, fulfillment, empowerment, spirituality, and how it's all connected. Um, that's our first solo episode. So let's see what um, what comes. Uh, what fruits <laughs> the tree will uh, exactly exactly. We decided to do this unfold. one in a little bit of a sad sand sort of fashion where we don't really prep for anything specific, uh, but we see what comes. No specific questions, no specific answers. Too many topics. I hope we can uh, spontaneously cover them all. Indeed, indeed. Well, um, it's funny because today is Halloween, which uh, we're filming on a Halloween uh, on 31st. So I was uh, watching on Instagram this morning. Someone mm -hmm. posted a really funny um, photo of a costume. And the costume is the uh, costume of a ghost. And it has... Uh, uh, it has that funny writing where I was ghosted, you know, and the, the text and how yeah. um, and the, and the the person who posted it said that's the scariest costume, which is super funny. But it made me think that how much uh, attention you mean ghosted like when when when, when people is you. not responding to a text for exactly. too long. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking how much attention we put onto what other people think of us. And um, I mean, of course, uh, nobody really thinks about you as much as you ever think they do. Yeah. But still this this heaviness of like other people. And um, and in a way you can't really, um, you know, like you can't, you know, sometimes people ask us, right? Like, well, but what do I do? How do I fight it? And you can't fight it because right now, we're doing this for the first time. Yeah. Sitting in a crowded coffee shop. Yeah. You know, all eyes are on on you, and you can't, uh, you know, you can't fight yeah. this little tickle that's there. Yeah. But you don't really have to. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can just exist um, with it, you know, still still being there. Yeah. Um. I think people who had not experienced it. The can we call it the pain of judgment? Mm -hmm. It's a pain. Wait, wait. Do you mean people who have not experienced it? People who not experienced it. Well, I meant people who have not experienced it in a very uh, aggressive way. Because mm -hmm. for most people, it's very mild. If one had a very, um, a very normal life of you know, good, popular in school, had um, you know relationships, lots of friends, and kind of like the regular normal life so th the feel of judgment will be like kind of like most people have it in a very it's there all the time well but don't you think it's actually uh, much stronger especially with social media no, no it's very like strong but people don't notice that it's strong because they don't feel it as the feel of judgment it's almost becomes like automatic so for example most people will wear the same brands in the category that they can afford but it will be that's how you dress this day. So 80% of people will be dressed like that. Right. And only 20% uh, that love fashion, but will be like, no, I want to try this and this and this and be outside of the box. Um, you know, it's funny because um, we were... Well, let me finish. Yeah. This is how it... Uh, this is the actually people who are watching. This is... Um, this conversation is a very honest representation of our life. We interrupt each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's charged. okay. It's okay. That's that's part of the thing. It's normal. Our our whole point actually with this conversation is to expose ourselves as much as we can. Right. Um, so when people are in this what I call mild constant judgment pain, but they're not really noticing it, they are more likely to stay in it for a long time. But what I wanted to say that when I was a kid, it was so intense. Like it was not just the regular. Like almost anything made me feel enormous anxiety and pain about from any category of life, um, from like what people think of my body to what people think of the way I speak or what I don't know where it came from, but I ha really like I feel like part of why later I succeeded to completely kind of like I don't want to say completely because the resonance of it is still there but not in my action it might just be inside but in my action it's i don't listen to it but the reason what i'm trying to say is that it was so severe when i was a kid and we can go into more detail later about different situations 
that when when it attacks you so hard you have more chances actually to break the spell later that's true but when it's mild and you're not noticing that you are in it um, well i think when you say mild i think some people will be like no it's not mild it's actually pretty intense but i think what she's trying to say is that it's like a slow burn it's just constantly there no. uh, instead of like really severe attacks once in a while yeah. because um you know i think anybody can relate that to the fact that sometimes you experience yourself in this this sort of more or less constant judgment where you're like why am i doing this what someone else is doing uh, more or like am i in the right uh, career path uh, you mm -hmm. know other people especially what i wanted to say about social media especially with social media like you're seeing too much you know like yeah. you're seeing so much stuff that uh and too many people are almost like the brain is just not capable by the way of uh it's an amazing example of how instagram is like everybody I think Elon Musk recently spoke about it. I saw it, maybe mm. not recently. What did um, say? He said that everybody picked the right lighting for the picture so they look better. They smile more than they smile in real life. They, uh, they basically show what maybe they would want the world to see. Yeah. But um, you know what I mean? No, no, no. I mean, of course. And, and, and then... So they're locked in that. Yeah, but then... Most people don't notice that they're doing it. It almost uh, feels makes them feel good when they post a picture in a good shadow. Yeah, but don't for a you second think they believe that that maybe that's how I look. No, that's that's exactly what happens. You believe because like, look, uh, we know multiple people who like on Instagram and like, you know, uh, constantly the image is more enhanced than in real life, but. It's it's this weird thing. I think it kind of brings us. It's funny. It brings us into like TikTok and AI sort of thing because where is the line of the re uh, where reality is and how where is authenticity in mm -hmm. that? Because you know, if I put makeup on, you know, and I'm sitting with like some lights and and stuff, um, I am not exactly hundred percent like I woke up this morning. Yeah. Um. I love you without makeup. The line is, is it becomes very blurred. Mm -hmm. And people, of course, I think it's psychological. You start believing what you're seeing, uh, you know? Yeah. And then, um, you know, but TikTok took it to completely different, uh, I feel, like, uh, side. Because in TikTok, it's, like, more authentic, raw, fast. You know the line between the perception of others and the actual experience is always not almost all the time but always different for example everybody uh, we have friends that we know uh, you know close friends more far friends and people that we randomly meet I look at our relationship and think oh it's like I want that but in reality both of us met in a time of our life that we know you know I would love to share that that yeah. that fact and go a little into it because both of us met well we met a little before but both of us fell in love with each other uh in a time of our life later after the fact we both talked about it but that for at least few months before that we both came without knowing that we experienced the same thing to a place without trying it was it was unrelated to relationships per se it was about life to a place where we didn't need a, a relationship as an object. We didn't need it to fulfill. We didn't actually, I, mean, I can talk for myself. I really remember myself because we started dating officially in June 30th of 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember like about beginning of June, I cut myself realizing it's a feeling and we can talk a little more how I got there, but like I didn't try to get there. Just that I don't actually think that 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 it's necessary to be in a relationship like i really i didn't it wasn't a thought it was a realization well uh, but then it comes to a question and then out of nowhere god plays again on what god say like oh now you think you don't need a relationship here you go <laughs> but that's the thing and uh, we uh you know like i feel it's constantly sort of reinforced on uh, you know uh everywhere on social media but you know at youtube of course everybody's searching for that uh okay i because at first, like when the secret came out, everybody were like, okay, I have to manifest. I have to actively manifest. Then everybody kind of realized. You know that the secret is the reason I moved to the US. 
We'll get to that. But well, it's not the reason. I used the secret to get to the U.S. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. What I'm yeah. trying to say is like the, you know, actively use it. Then a new wave came and people said, no, 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 that's not how it works. You cannot actively try to, you know, with your mind to do this. It's not going to work like that. You kind of have to let go and, you know, just and and I think um, it's it's really hard to explain what what you're saying is when you gave up and just said, I actually don't need this. That's when it came. And it always uh, when we had a conversation, it wasn't though like um, it wasn't from a place of. And you know it, I'm just want to, because I really think this can be useful for people if they get what we're trying to say here. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't from a place, oh, I can't find a perfect relationship. Maybe I don't need it. No, it was, I know I can find great That's relationships, but do I? does it give me a vitamin of something extra in life? That's what I'm saying. It was a genuine feeling or whatever, call yeah. it feeling, uh, where you said, I really don't need it. And that's when it came. I remember when we had a conversation with Scott, uh, with Scott Nathan, yeah. and that's exactly what I said. He's like, you know, things just came to me, and and I said exactly that's the that's the thing because things come to you when you don't want them anymore, and it's almost like a freaking cosmic oh, we can, joke. We can we can we can actually go a little deeper. What want is because people think yes, want as is. Yes, Muji say, remove the want. No, Papaji, who said it? No, it's a Buddha, one, but it's it's not even about that. People don't. People live life without, um, they're using words and using emotions and using um, things as if it's, without looking deeply. Um, like they use the word want. They don't even understand what it means for them. They don't well, understand that the want is a pain. Well People the don't understand that the want, the no, 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 the want itself. It puts you in, in, um, what is it? Where did it come from? This want, right? Who taught you that you need to want? Because there is there is inspiration, and well, there I think, is acting I think upon inspiration, and you're like we had with the escape room that we work for twenty hours without understanding why we have a passion. We have to do it. We have, you know, it's passion. I but, think you. But um, but the want itself, it's is it even helping the world in any way? The the want always feels like you s just separated yourself from the Look, present moment uh, in a way. The want, obviously, uh, I think, I think it's obvious, uh, it was taught to us during uh, childhood uh, because when you are, like, look, I look at Luca, uh, he wants, I don't know, like, let's use the word want, he wants things, but he wants them in a way like... Uh, Give me an example. Well, he points Luca to something. Luca is our baby. He, w he points to something and he wants to grab something. That's not the different. That's one not second, the want. One second. What I'm trying to s that's precisely what I'm getting at. Yeah. I'm trying to say that he's very easily and lightly uh, moves. Well, you know, that's, he's not, that's he's not getting stuck. Because that's not a want. That's the present moment. You are letting life flow. I've noticed actually Luca, when he was, you know, start eating, he doesn't have a thing where he eats, let's say, a banana. And the pleasure sits in the memory. Most of us, the pleasure of the food sits in the memory, and creates some sort of a desire to eat it again because you remember it in a certain way, and that's how most people eat, right? He eats very spontaneously. He ate a banana mm -hmm. today. He wants raspberry tomorrow, egg whites, and then suddenly the next day, a banana is very sweet, right? So it's way, in my opinion, tastier than an egg white. Then you put the egg white and the banana in front of him, and today spontaneously it it grabs the the egg white. What the want I want is obviously more psychological. It comes later. Mm -hmm. For example, if I have this item here, and I'm holding it, and say suddenly out of nowhere you have this feeling that you want to possess it. Mm -hmm. Immediately, because you don't have it, you feel pain. Yep. Because you have uh, something happened where suddenly you are separated from the state of calmness you can call it a pain is 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 created to get it because until you get it the one says i'm not comfortable i think it's two things um it, cr it creates what you said but it also because i'm separated from you i'm not happy i'm not i cannot be just content with you having it and that's very different like when you have kids that becomes very different because you become very content with your kid having something mm -hmm. and you you know 
you give it you, you know uh, like uh, like you know if you love your kid you want to give them even if you wanted something but you're much mm. happier giving it to them than having it yourself and you enjoying it through them yeah and that's the thing um the closer that relationship is mm-hmm. the more happy you are someone else having something but i think we're so because we're so disconnected from one another mm-hmm. Uh, it creates exactly what you're saying. It pains me that I don't have it. But sometimes it's even further. Sometimes it pains me that you have it. Yeah. And that's jealousy, right? Oh, I don't want you to have it. I want, you know, but that's... um, But I'm more, yeah, what you're saying is is already the next level. It's also from the same family. But even if no one else has something and you just, let's say it was here and you're trying to understand how do I take possession of it legally or whatever the situation is just you in the world with that cup until you get it there's pain mm-hmm. so and a lot of people confuse when they hear things like that they say well you know what what are you saying what you should do and i'm not saying you should or shouldn't do anything there's times where life pushes you to get something and you won't be able to stop it because an example um okay a good example is the escape room business came to us completely spontaneous we're Mm -hmm. not actually looking to do a business at that time of our life yeah that's true more so not an escape room that we didn't even know not that we didn't know what type of business we didn't know what escape rooms are we can get into details of this one once we did it we hit some sort of a wave we were right ahead of the big hype Mm -hmm. but we didn't know it Mm -hmm. that it's coming to the u.s so it was about seven, eight companies that somehow like mystically all popped up at the same time. We had an amazing run. But do you remember what happened as we did it? So it was a year of a lot of people come in. And then the next year we had 99% of people would be customers. And 1% would be people who were trying to also open an escape room yeah, business, yeah, yeah. trying to investigate. Yeah. Looking at all the traffic that comes through the door, 150 people per day. You know, some of them tried to become friends with us and some of them did. Um, and they thought, okay, I want this type of business because it's creative, because you meet all the people, you meet celebrities, you meet all the companies. It's, it's, you know, it's so fun. But guess what? Remember what happened to that second wave? Yeah, I'm not so successful as the because first. Because their drive was from the want. It wasn't from that passion. So know? what you're saying is um, it has to be uh, inspired. But the problem is, like, look. Uh, the want has to be inspired. It sh- so it's not a want. It's So someone listening will say, okay, um, so should I do nothing unless unless something inspiring comes? Should I just be sitting and doing nothing? That's like the what, should, that's I, the what fun should I be doing? But you know what's the fun part? I think, I truly believe that if you have a quiet mind, each and every one of us will get inspiration right away True, from life. I agree. I agree. Every single one of us will get inspiration. I agree. The problem is most people are. But how do you quiet your mind? It's a very wide range of answers I can give you. But I know, I know. but uh, It all depends on the person or their level of consciousness, on their level of readiness to be. But are there like... I mean, I hate, I hate to put it like that. Are there easy hacks? I know there's... There's okay, the so technical, the right. There is the technical uh, hack, which is meditation. We even that, mo- a lot of people are not willing to do. I remember that me, myself, about 15 years ago, probably could not close my eyes for more than 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm meditating two hours like it's, like it's five minutes. But, um, but I'm enjoying it. I <laughs> for yeah. me, it's like... It brings me to this place of alone, where even alone is perceived, and I love it. But beside the point, meditation is one of them. Um, asking difficult questions is another way. But this way, people need to understand: if they never ask themselves difficult questions, they will be going through a lot of pain at first. So, so at first there will be pain, then there will be. V- so so let's let's just focus on the want a little bit because it's uh, it's interesting. So. Um, how do I differentiate between, let's say, inspira- let's let's separate those words, uh, inspiration and wants. Let's put 
a negative cognition on want just for for the purposes of of this and positive on inspiration mm-hmm. so let's say because a lot of a lot of people struggle with different things like some people struggle with eating habits and they're like well because i want it you know what i mean like uh, well, you know i seems to be a want um how do you separate them the want and the inspiration and uh how what do you do with want in my opinion hmm. or in my experience no in someone else's opinion of course in your no, opinion no because i would love to hear your thoughts about it as well but <laughs> I'll, sure. i'll tell you what i think me sitting observing the cup right now uh is there any other object you can put in my hand that i can observe it and the act of observation will be a different act meaning i will be using a different type of no okay that means that whatever you put in my hand right now it's the same feeling correct correct so the way you differentiate the want first of all i w- it will add a layer of pain meaning i'm sitting here in this room observing the same way i observed the cup so before the want i feel absolutely fine don't call it any names don't call it happiness don't call it anything after the want comes you will not be observing the if you even if you observe the room physically you will be not feeling good mm-hmm. because the want creates some sort of a um, i like the definition thing. inspiration and want their main differences is inspiration is so strong it 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 almost Drives forces you. you to act people who who are in creative fields they know it right away mm-hmm. oh sometimes that's why also like songs i don't like to write songs every day because well uh, i love sometimes i have the drive to, to suddenly oh, oh i have to i drive 40 minutes to the studio i lock myself there for 12 years. it just i have to do it today some days i feel ah but i've been there i've been into that let's do two weeks of just every day five tracks five music five writing sessions just not for me it wasn't enjoyable it wasn't a real inspiration mm-hmm. it was actually a want to create a bunch of music yeah, yeah. but um, I think want and inspiration the short answer is inspiration immediately you don't have a choice and it's not like you're saying okay it's inspiration I must act no you will act and want you actually at first there will be a delay usually because you will feel pain and it will be a psychological thing And then even when you act, the want will be polluting your action because you're not really acting in the moment. You're, 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 not, you're acting as the ego, basically. You're acting smaller because right. the want drives it. Right. I always like, I love when, when people, I always bring back to Arnold Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. because he's one of my favorite biographies to read. I always and I already know his biography but I always have this new movie came or mm-hmm. watched it again it it's amazing it feels like if you just listen to what he says it was a very goic oriented I want I want but you know what I come to realize no it was re- true inspiration there's not one f- want in the world that will take a small kid from Austria after World War II from a village and and have him know that he will be a bodybuilder and a movie star and come and make millions of dollars in the US. It was true inspiration that was filled with Driving pure him, action. Yeah. And I mean, people can watch the movie or or read the biography. Uh, that everybody were against it. Da, 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 da. Even today, it's very hard in our age, right? Back then in the 60s mm-hmm. <laughs> to move to the US yeah, yeah. with an accent to make it in the movie industry. Those distractions, though. <laughs> But look, look what happens at the result of him fulfilling just going with the inspiration and acting and acting and acting and acting first Terminator is 1983 right we can um, look it up and then how many millions and millions of people he inspired me my favorite movie like it's one Arnold Schwarzenegger but the inspiration drove him and he made half of the planet <laughs> admire him mm-hmm. but not him the characters he's playing like the Terminator is, is, is like it's like a art right and I cannot imagine anybody else being the robot funny enough the story is that they actually he was supposed to not be the robot he was Very, he, he was went to, to, the, to, yeah, I, to, to audition as calories mm-hmm. um, 
But there's so many stories about that, like Adele. Mm-hmm. She came into the industry where there was only EDM tracks. Uh, but how many people she made cry with her songs. Right. So it's like, you know, huh, the richest guy in the world right now. Elon Musk? Yeah, is he? Yeah, either look first what or it second. Did, look I what know, it I did. Can't keep look track. By him overworking, exhausting himself. Look, look, but that was true inspiration. Look how, how, how he made l- the planet you know, better. You I know? think he's actually a good example because um, he says, and I think it's very, it, it's genuine what he's saying. He says that he has so much stuff going on in his head that like wants to jump out like all those ideas that he just can't like you know he has to do it yeah and he works a lot because it's just like all those things they almost possess him in a way you know so i think he's you know a little bit of a, an extreme example but i see what you're saying the thing is the thing about want i kind of um, i look at it uh also from maybe a little more um, um, superficial level but I really became recently I became fascinated with this whole uh, idea of um, marketing and branding and all those products and like we're bombarded with so much stuff constantly uh, you know uh, well they uh, want is their the uh, it's it's want is their main recipe what but not not only just want manufactured artificially manufactured want that you did not have and you didn't want those things in the first place and yeah. now you want them and uh, I um, at some point I, I was caught up in this in this thing where oh I want this I want that and um, it's almost like um, it's a bottomless pit where you're just like falling in this rabbit hole and uh, it's it's hard to pull yourself out because it just becomes almost like this this anxiety pick picks up and um but when you st- when you step away from it you're like oh my god not only it's not my want they told me i want it without me wanting to one one second without me wanting to uh to want it and and the way they manufactured it it's actually more and more sophisticated mm-hmm. uh where i'm not even going to know that someone put the, those thoughts almost in my in my mind but it's just like all those layers around mm. that that you see like constantly i it's funny because you know we uh try to keep look away from screens right yeah <laughs> um yes it's a conscious decision because i don't want him to be too you know exposed to screens too early yeah um and i find myself noticing that there are so many screens everywhere you know, because when you're not paying attention, it's like just at the, at the background. Oh, 2023. They're, they're everywhere. You're like, please, do I have to be in the forest to just, just be separated from those screens? And constantly there's information coming at you. Um, so I feel we're actually on a, on a, at a point where um, like we're hitting like overload. People are l- literally getting overloaded i think that's why there's so much pain anxiety and unhappiness yeah because people just overload it and they can't process it anymore because we're not computers we're not ai we we need time to digest things and just process too much information so i think we're actually gonna hit um an age where a lot of people will will consciously aim to to quote unquote want less (laughs) If I boil it all down, do you remember the cup? It's still there. <laughs> so, the way I look at marketing, or on Instagram, just just regular go and follow someone who sells you something, a way of life. Um, so you agree with me that it doesn't matter how many times you turn around and look back at it, the feeling of watching it is the same? Yeah. I wouldn't even say watching, I was observing, right? Uh, so, marketing, they sell you the idea that you will be able to look at it and feel something different. Look, but let's not be hypocrites. We're also in uh, in this business of, uh, yeah. you know... Um, no, I'm not saying it's a bet. I'm just saying how it is. Yeah. 
that I think the thing is, I, I think, um, you know, we have to separate certain things. There is nothing bad with emotion attached to something, to a yeah. product. Mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly don't see anything. If, if something truly gives you like a nice boost or emotion, it's mm-hmm. all about experiences in life. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool with it. And if you're loving it, yeah. you know, uh, but uh, what you what 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 you were saying about pain? Mm-hmm. It creates it's it's almost like it's such a paradox. It what creates what so much pain. So what for what for what in it creates the what what's the what's the cause of pain then? Okay, I'll give you an example. No, in and your you opinion. You tell me what's the cause of pain. Um, I'll tell you what I think about it. So um, it's about in a way it's about wanting more, bigger, better, and better than someone else. That's what creates pain, I think. Actually, I heard Sadhguru say something very interesting. Uh, He said um, it's about expansion. The problem is, um, is that, uh, and and that thought resonated with me. Mm -hmm. That that you know what what he said because um, it's about expansion. We as infinite beings constantly want to expand, but the problem is we're confined by a physical body which cannot by definition expand uh, you know beyond its uh, limitations and but we we kind of locked ourselves in wanting to expand in material so i want a bigger car i want a bigger house i want more 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 and the problem is the more you get the unhappier you become it's it's i i honestly i don't know one example it's not not always like that it's not always like that it's only like that when you're locked into the world of uh, want or you're locked into the world of future. So the many, some people, um, they have a more wealthy lifestyle and they're still the same. I'm not saying they're happy or unhappy, but they still remain the same. They didn't become less happy because that's not what I'm saying. If I'm they're saying grounded in, in, in like, like your father, for example, it's a good example. Like he's very, uh, um, every time he's around, you feel like the, the, the divine has landed because of his presence. Well, but that was there, you know, e- even when he was younger. I no, think no. It's like an innate. There's just some people like that. But it's like maybe it's education. Maybe but it's what I'm saying, like if, if we're talking about want more specifically, yeah. I'm saying that, uh, you don't really need watch number five. Uh, you don't need uh, three Ferraris. Nobody. I, l- let me put it this way: not that you don't need. That's that's a little judgmental. I don't mean it like that. You don't. You really don't want it because what you want is an experience, and that experience is mom- momentarily. Mm-hmm. R- happens momentarily. So you sit in that car. You bought it. You're like, oh, yay. And then the next moment is gone. Um, so you really don't need all those. Th- you don't want all those things. I think it's individual. I think it's. It depends on the situation how those Ferraris ended up there. Because if someone collects um, art, okay, is enjoying looking at that art at home. Some people want uh, 50 Ferraris. If they can afford it, they just look at it in their garage. Look, and I'm, not uh, s- I'm not saying anybody again, should do whatever they want to do. If but if pain is involved, that means for their own sake, it's not the right path. Because pain means something uh, disbalanced in the way they are perceiving I life. Think, I think sometimes it's, it's pain. Sometimes it's just a void. Where void of what? Void where the more things you get, the more empty you feel. Well, I think if they felt empty, they would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think I guess, mm, I don't know. I empty in a different because way. Because, uh, because if they experience pain, it's not void. It's an object. Pain is an object. You can observe it. You can report about it. True. It's not void. Okay. The way I talk about it right now, uh, it's very mild. And sometimes with certain people in a conversation, I would be talking even in a milder way. But sometimes um, I would be even going all the way in. I just like it, it's all depending on the appropriateness of the situation. Um, I kind of read p- 
people by their I don't try to do it it just spontaneously happens doesn't it happen to you like you meet someone and suddenly words come of your mouth no 100% silly you suddenly have sense you don't of humor you, you didn't want to say like why am I saying it with this person yeah it's because spontaneously you oh, I mean I know you you are like that as well uh, you kind of merge yourself to the level uh, and I don't say level in a way that that lesser or more it's mean less and more it's just the level of consciousness the level of whatever you want to call it the level of matureness um, the level of awareness of certain being and like recently a few days ago that's why it came to my mind we went to um, an event and I met a few people and suddenly I find myself um, behaving in a very specific way I even felt myself like at certain moments oh I'm again doing a, a silly joke that I'm not supposed to do and it was very interesting there was no judgment towards myself I just like wow with in this scenario suddenly this dance came and um, funny I said dance it's almost like dancing because you don't know what's coming yeah um, and then right now uh, there's no way in the world I don't even I can't even recall some of those jokes I made like that, that this is gonna come out of my mouth so what in your opinion makes that happen that you're it's like visually one yoni but like if you capture me on camera in those five scenarios or like those five different people you know it's funny it's actually there is a guy i want to interview who talks about he's a scientist and he proved that uh um free will does not exist like you know i i haven't looked too much into it but it was just oh it's um uh, it's the uh I think he's in Stanford or something. He's yeah, somewhere yeah, in I California. Saw that. Basically, yeah. they, they, they read the brain waves, the one that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, if someone was... Um, they had the right button and the left button, and they had like put like all the wires to the brain or whatever to measure the brain waves, and they succeeded to, to detect where the choice yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wave comes from. And... Uh, the action happens before the brain. So, so the, yeah. So basically, they said randomly now for an hour, whenever you're ready, yeah. hit whichever one. You can do only right, only left, whatever. And every single time, the action for the right came about a millisecond before ch the choice to it put to the right the brain, appeared. Yeah. yeah, I'm always fascinated with that because I always felt that uh, free will is like that. Uh, Isn't it funny though? Uh, like it happened to us all the time and I'm sure people who listen will relate uh, sometimes. I mean, the smallest example is like, I'm, I'm sure it happened to everybody. You're in a traffic light going home. You always make a right turn. Spontaneously, you d sometimes you're like, it's a thought, let's go left. Sometimes it's just, there's too much traffic, let's go left. Sometimes just spontaneously, you're on the phone, you go left. You go left because you know you can detour. And you do the detour and suddenly you meet a friend you haven't seen right. in five years that you thought about yesterday. Yep. So every most people will be like, Oh, it's so crazy. I chose to turn left and you were there. No. <laughs> That's not the exactly, case. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's not the case. Give me uh, some uh, closing thoughts on the want. So how do you... Uh, what's your relationship with want? Um, now? Or well, I mean, now throughout life? You mean like, um, well, I mean, what do you mean through, throughout life? You, you're not the same as 10 years ago. So, so now so in this... So, first of all, I'm at a place in my life where I can have anxiety come to my mind without my will. And I will report to you that I'm not in anxiety right now. And I won't be lying. Mm -hmm. Like standing on nails. Well, uh, we we'll no. talk about it It's next like, time. it's there. There's nothing I can do about it. I recognize it. Sometimes based on memory, sometimes the reflex. Same with want. Does it appear in my mind time to time? Yes, but I don't give it food. Uh, meaning you don't act upon it? I don't give it attention. I don't give it attention with emotion. Meaning, um, I think that attention is the food of thought. You give a certain thought attention. It grows, a lot of yeah. times like no but I have obsessive thoughts I can't get rid of them I want to get rid of them you say you want to get rid of them but you mm -hmm. are 
you are fueling them with your attention. So, we can to summarize, the want appears in me. Uh, I observe it without any emotion. I recognize what it is. I know that it will not do any good to my life at this moment, nor it will even help me get what I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what happens usually is just a matter of minutes to hours, and it will just fade away by itself. Um, in the past, I was very... But how do you reconcile that with, I mean, obviously we're running a business, so there are some goals, but that's a perfect. Uh, but that's a perfect like example. Did we want to open a coffee shop? No. <laughs> this is a perfect example. We never wanted a coffee shop. Yeah. No, no, that's and then actually we, very true. You know, and then we didn't want right away to open 15. We just said when the inspiration comes, we do it. Yeah. Uh, no. so. Yeah, very true. No, no, I completely agree with that. Um... You know what's funny? I sometimes try to uh, because y- you know the mind still kind of and also uh, you know I'm be completely honest. I'm driving. Both of us are driving nice cars. No, no, that's what I wanted it's to uh, say. There were not any. Uh, uh, first of all, the specific car I'm driving right now was never my um, um, that specific car I want. I could probably it's for not the a same. Car, it's a couch. <laughs> it's no. For oh the no, that one. Okay. For, for the same amount of money, I could probably buy my dream car. But I chose. But this, at that moment, that suddenly there was an inspiration to get that car, and I f- just went with it. Right, right. It it wasn't <gasps> like you, you know, know I a lot of people want the Ferrari for twenty years and then eventually they get it. The ones that, that yeah, buy into and it. then and those and twenty years later they don't want it anymore. And then uh, I mean I spoke to someone like that from the category of of it just like you know it's funny it's like he took it to he told me I took it to a garage to fix something yeah and they lifted it and he said I had the um, I had the weirdest experience because for the first time I did not see it as a Ferrari I saw <laughs> four wheels made out of rubber <laughs> the whole thing that shapes this beautiful Ferrari was just made out of this new material like and I could see that it just ends there and underneath <laughs> it's all this dirty oil and the like packaging and was and gone. No, no, like, like I've never thought about it when it's lifted up because yeah. suddenly it lost all that value. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, th- th- that's my point. Um, it's okay to have experiences and nice things, and I'm not for sure I'm not the last guy I'm going to tell you not to, to do that. I'm just literally talking about the function of the want in your life. Is it helping you or is it in your way? Yeah, and yeah, In yeah. my opinion, it's... it's Especially again, words are very limited, so maybe some people use the word want and they actually mean inspiration, for the most part, it's not the case, but I'm just saying I'm being very careful with the wording too, because wording is very flexible. Well, I think a good way of um, of sort of putting the color on it is relating it to pain, because when yeah. you feel pain, if you feel pain, probably it's not a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> but also pain is there to teach you something. So for a while, it's okay to be in that pain and the want, investigate. And I think, in my opinion, the longer it lasts is because you have not learned the lesson it came to teach you. Well, but then you should investigate that pain, not that want. Yes. Because people focus on the want and not the p- they're removing the pain instead of focusing on yeah, the pain. Yeah, take, take the want into a garage, lift <laughs> it, <laughs> and you will see and pain. And look inside. <laughs> <laughs>